Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for the delay, technical troubles. Good morning. Welcome to everyone worshiping here at St. James and joining us online. We do have a few announcements this morning. Synod delegates will be meeting this Saturday for the 150th Synod of the Diocese of Niagara. Please keep Bishop Susan, all delegates, and the Synod proceedings in your prayers in the coming week. If you are interested in participating in the Association of Dundas Church's Advent Walk in the park, please speak with Canon Leslie, Norma Coe, or Anne Washington in the next couple of weeks. There is a house tour meeting in the parlor following today's service. Can you help spread the word about the house tour on December 7th? Flyers are available for distribution, especially in the areas of Ancaster, Flamborough, and Westdale. Please speak to Anne Washington to receive flyers and to indicate the area where you will be distributing. As fall quickly turns to the cold winter months, there are many who will need warm coats, boots, and sleeping bags. Our annual boot and coat drive is underway. You can help by circulating information through your communication channels. We are accepting clean uh, boots, coats, and sleeping bags. Uh, just a reminder, today is the last day for Tony Major's beautiful art display that has been on our walls this month. And Christine Aitken attended at the, at the cathedral a workshop, Human Trafficking, Not in My Neighborhood. If you are interested in learning more, please speak to Christine during the coffee hour. We will be distributing Halloween treats on Thursday evening. Please speak to Canon Leslie or one of the wardens if you can help with our trick-or-treaters. Don't forget to set your clocks back next Saturday as we return to Standard Time. For information on upcoming events, please read the weekly e-blast or visit our website for details on all the acti activities happening at St. James. Thank you. Have a lovely Sunday and a spectacular week. Please stand as you are able. We gather on the territory traditionally inhabited by the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe nations, acknowledged in the dish with one spoon wampum belt.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we remain standing, as we are able, let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Kizia, and the third Kiran Hapuk. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for, the tho- for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. 
For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Holy wisdom, holy word. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark. God, Lord Jesus Christ. God be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Christ. Praise to you. I speak to you today in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we've just heard two readings from, well, three readings from different parts of scripture. 
in the Job reading, the Old Testament, and Mark in the New Testament. Both of them are personal in nature. Both relate to some form of resolution after a long human struggle. For Job, after facing his own vulnerability and his fragility, he becomes humbled and grateful and deeply aware of his place in the big picture of God's kingdom. In Mark's gospel, we have Bartimaeus, whose sight is restored to him after years of blindness. You might want to move if you're cold. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. You'll get some more. <laughs> I couldn't help but think of this song when I was reflecting on the gospel reading this week. These lyrics by Johnny Nash, not Johnny Cash, Johnny Nash. Um, I couldn't help but, but keep hearing that song over in my head. It became kind of, um, what do they call that, earworm? <laughs> And so as I was reflecting um, on this poor blind man who was healed and had his sight miraculously restored, and there were a few things that struck me as I read through the story. First, when Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus, do you notice that everyone around him is doing their best to shut him up? Like they're telling him to be quiet. Be quiet. Don't make any noise. And so his response, he shouts even louder. He's not going to let this opportunity go by. And it's kind of comical when you read it again in that way. And the second thing is Mark writes that as Bartimaeus shouts out to get Jesus' attention, Jesus stops dead in his tracks. Like he just, he stops walking. And he had this similar reaction when there was a woman in another story who touched the hem of his, of his robes. And then the third thing, Jesus, as he's standing there, he gets the disciples to tell Bar Bartimaeus to come to him. So he's asking Bartimaeus to participate in his own healing. And lastly, and maybe most curiously, is Bartimaeus's response. He's a blind beggar, and yet we read that he springs up when he comes to Jesus. So is this, is this man a young man who's begging in the streets? Is he full of the spirit? Is he anticipating this new change in his life? And when he springs up, Bartimaeus throws off his cloak. He throws it off. Well, why would he do that? A beggar's cloak would have been their most valued possession and probably their only possession. A cloak was a piece of versatile clothing used to gather those few coins that passers-by would have tossed to him. It kept him warm at night and dry and it shaded him from the sun during the day. It provided him some comfort when he was lying down or sitting. His cloak would have also been a sleeping companion. So why did he throw it off like that? Sheer excitement, exuberance maybe? Or is it possible at some unconscious level, he realized that things were never gonna be the same again? and all those years of perhaps frustration were being thrown off like a garment. Of course, we'll never really know the answers to these questions. Whatever the significance of Bartimaeus springing up and throwing off his cloak, 
At the very least, it adds color and humor to the story. So what happens next? Well, he appears before Jesus. And it's almost like Jesus is looking favorably on Bartimaeus, who seems to be intensely full of life all of a sudden. And despite his blindness, he has this ability to see Jesus for who he is. Unlike the disciples in the stories we've heard over the last while, the disciples have had a really difficult time understanding and seeing who Jesus is. So now Jesus asks a question of Bartimaeus, and it's the same question he put to James and John that you heard last week in the gospel. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks. What do you want me to do for you? And he replies, my teacher, let me see again. And in true Mark and fashion, Jesus immediately responds, healing Bartimaeus. And then in turn, he immediately responds by following Jesus on the way. A way that's not going to make life any easier, but it's going to be much richer and much fuller. In a sense, we are like Bartimaeus. There's times in our lives when we might find ourselves begging for what we don't have. There's times when we can be blind. And blindness comes in so many different ways. Maybe we find it hard to recognize how much we're truly loved. Sometimes we aren't able to see the beauty in others because we can't get past what's on the outside. Maybe we can't see possibilities in our lives that others can, or we lose the ability to see the beauty of faith. Maybe we no longer see the community around us with eyes that detect the gifts and potential. And at times it's possible that we've lost sight of hope or clear direction or a purpose for our lives or for the life of the church. Some of us may have been blindsided in business deals or in friendships. We can be blinded by the light and we can be blinded by darkness. We can be blind to signs of danger or the beauty of creation. We all have blind spots that prevent us from seeing fully and completely. So there's all kinds of reasons why we, like Bartimaeus, could benefit by having our sight restored. And I'm sure that reach beyond the, I'm sh the reasons I'm sure reach beyond more than any of the ones that have been mentioned here. But here's the thing. In order to turn to Jesus as Bartimaeus did, each of us has a cloak to throw off. We have to rid ourselves of the things that weigh us down, the obstacles that are in our way, just like we heard in the song. I can see all obstacles in my way. We need to shed and let go of the past so that we're able to spring up and respond to God's call allowing Jesus to heal the afflictions that blind us and diminish our capacity for living. A good question we might want to pray and reflect on is, what is my cloak made of? Or what do I need to throw off? What no longer serves us or God's purposes and needs to be let go of? At times in our life, we just need Jesus to say, go. Your faith has made you well. A faith that is enough to want to follow him on the way as Bartimaeus did. But maybe also a faith in ourselves. A faith in the future. A faith in others. Faith in the church. Faith in life itself. Let's pray. God of light, help us to see Jesus as clearly as Bartimaeus. Help us to see St. James and the Dundas community, our nation and the world 
with the eyes of Jesus. Help us to recognize that in loving your creation, you are everywhere present. God, remove our blind spots and restore our sight that in knowing you, we would spring into action with hope and with vigor, eager to follow your way. Amen. I think I can make it now. The pain is gone. You, you can move again. <laughs> May it be so. Amen. And now would you please stand with me as we affirm our faith together. Let us confess the faith confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Standing, sitting, or kneeling as you are most comfortable, let us pray. Holy One, we praise you for your abiding guidance. You sent Jesus to be our teacher and Messiah to model for us the way of love. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of our neighbors and ourselves on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our creator, when you speak, there is light and life. When you act, there is justice and love. Grant that your love may be present at the 150th Synod of the Diocese of Niagara as it meets next Saturday. So, that so that what is said and what is done 
may be filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we pray for peace in the world and bring before you peoples and nations confronted by war and armed conflict, those who are war-torn and world-weary. Shower on them and their communities many blessings as they seek to rebuild their lives in peace and guide and protect refugees fleeing from war and persecution in their homelands. Direct all rulers and governments to strive for justice, peace, and the fair distribution of this world's riches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all those suffering from the ravages of natural disasters. Give them encouragement, strength, fortitude, patience, and insight as they struggle with their losses, both physical and emotional, and begin to pick up the pieces of their lives and create a new future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Be for them a beacon of hope and confidence that there will be a better day. Surround them with your love and the love and compassion of others, that they might be sustained in their time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, our teacher and healer, you heard the cry of the blind beggar when others would have silenced him. Teach us to be attentive to the voices others ignore that we might respond through the power of the Spirit to heal the afflicted and to welcome the abandoned. For your sake and for the sake of the gospel, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the sick and suffering and those who care for them. We pray for those for whom this day will be long and hard. Especially we are praying this morning for David, Audrey, Rick, Gerald, and Jean, Anne C., Charles, Matt, Terry, Dana, Dawn, Beth, Charles, and W., Bob T., Jackie Donnelly, and Scott Collier. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God. Remember before you friends and loved ones who have enriched our lives and are now departed from us. We remember those who have died in recent days. May your light shine on them forever and on our lives, and our lives be richer because of their memory. May those who, move, who mourn be comforted. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Life-giving God. Heal our lives, that we may acknowledge your wonderful deeds and offer you thanks from generation to generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. 
Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are showing God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of your promise, you pour forth your spirit upon us, filling us with gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation. 
the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us as we sing. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God.
As you are able, if you could please stand. Let's pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And just before we have our blessing, um, we just have a little presentation to make. I'm going to ask the warden. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's what you've done over the years. Um, so we found out in September that you celebrated a pretty substantial anniversary. 50 years of music ministry and playing in churches, probably. 50, five, zero. So we wanted to recognize that. card here that the congreg most of the congregation has signed. If you haven't signed it, then maybe during coffee time. And I believe there's also, cake. there's cake to celebrate. Always cake. <laughs> so congratulations. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace this day and always. Amen. Amen.